Well, I, I believe there were many forces behind it. Uh, we have to make sure that something like that will not happen again. Uh, President Vikramasinghe was the best choice we had. And he has delivered. And I'm engaging with people because I trust them. Well, I mean, uh, the political stability is back and law and order is back. As you know, there was a time where the, we had a, a huge issue regarding the law and order and implementing uh, law and order. But I think after President Vikram Singh came into office, uh, he has managed to restore law and order. And also to address certain basic issues, like we had, uh, we had 16 hour power cuts and we had long queues for few at, at gas stations or fuel stations. So there's a problem with the supply chain and uh, that has been restored. And we believe even the economy is stab stabilizing up to a certain extent. Uh, but I'm not saying that they have done something overnight or we have done a massive change for the last 12 months. But considering where we were last year, uh, I think life back has become much, pretty much normal. And uh, moving forward, but yes, I, I do have to agree regarding the cost of living, increasing the electricity tariff, uh, increasing uh, the fuel prices has affected uh, badly on the masses and, and, and especially the SME sector. And, and also as a result of increasing uh, the taxation. Uh, on top of that, inter bank interest rates uh, has 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 a very bad impact on the SME sector and also the large scale industries as well. So these are something something that the government has to work on. And this is something that concerns myself and our, our party as well. Uh, because as you see, there have been a couple of massive job cuts taken place uh, last couple of months in, um, in the apparel sector. And also we see a declining on the SME sector as well. Uh, due to taxation and increasing um, uh, the bank interest. So these are the areas I think that the government has to address immediately. Uh, but overall, I must say that uh, the political stability and law and order is restored. Uh, so now we have the right or the freedom to do politics as a democratic nation. Well, I, I believe there were many forces behind it. I mean, Sri Lanka, this is, not the, this is not the first time Sri Lanka has gone through this. And I'm sure countries like India, uh, when, you, when, you, when you become the superpower, which you are heading towards to become an economic superpower in the world, I mean, you will, you will always find uh, people who are against it and who doesn't want to see certain countries in Asia becoming bigger than uh, certain countries. Because obviously we were colonized one time. Uh, so likewise, uh, uh, there, is, there was a trend in the Middle East at one point to destabilize certain economies, certain countries. So now we see the similar trend uh, following in Asia. So as governments, I mean, we, personally I won't blame anyone because as, as administration, as governments, as politicians, we must be prepared to face it. And at the same time, uh, we have to make sure that something like that will not happen again. No, I think, uh, I, I personally believe uh, for the, one of those decisions were taken because of in external uh, pressure. It's purely because, firstly, President Rajapaksa, Mahindra Rajapaksa resigned as the Prime Minister from the request came from President Gotabe Rajapaksa. And as a result, some of the cabinet ministers and um, SLPP parliamentarians uh, has given a written document saying that President Prime Minister must change. So eventually they crossed over, everyone who gave the letter. 
and they want the President Gotabe Rajapaksa to resign. So I believe President Gotabe Rajapaksa resigned uh, because he didn't want violence. I mean, he would have saved the government by violence, by attacking or by using military. But he didn't want to do that. I mean, he had option, he had two options, either to save the government or uh, to save a country as per se, as, as, uh, whether to save the entire system. So what he decided was, um, you know, he'd take one step back and let the government go and let's, let's, let's uh, keep the administration and the country safe. So the next uh, group of uh, people who are going to be elected or <coughs> from the parliament uh, can move forward. So I personally believe none of them consulted uh, any of uh, the outside missions uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a situation like that. Because we, be, we believe our decisions should be based on the um, interest of the people of Sri Lanka. I personally believe he, it's, it's not the right decision. Uh, at the same time, I understand why he did that. It was unavoidable uh, due to security reasons for him especially. I mean, it, you have to go through that process or go through that experience to realize how dangerous it is. I mean, uh, we can make statements as politicians, as individuals. But once you go through that kind of a trauma, only we'll realize. Because I was in a temple trees for four days with more than 2,000 people. Uh, May 9th, stuck inside, trying to get people home. While their houses were burned, my house were burned. Uh, and at the same time, one of our members, a member of parliament was killed and there was no support from the government, no support from the military or the police. So I, I understand why he did that. But I, I personally believe um, it, sh it shouldn't have been that way. And I, I, I believe he was safe here. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's his choice. No, I personally believe he's still very popular among the masses. And people believe in him, especially SLPP followers and the people who voted for President Godabe Rajapaksa. Majority of them voted for President Godabe because of President Mahindra Rajapaksa. And uh, he's still very active and he still has his own, um, he still has his own policy, vision and SLPP is his party. So I believe SLPP has a, a, a bigger role to play now. Uh, because, of course, we were elected with 69 lakhs of vote. Our president was there. We had a two-third majority of the parliament. But unfortunately, we couldn't maintain it. Whether it's external force or whether it's conspiracy, you know, we have taken one step back. And again, we have got to, get, got to act together and got President Vikram Singh elected. So we have a responsibility towards our people, our voters, uh, to make sure that we bring back normalcy and uh, we help the current government to stabilize the economy. Uh, uh, and at the same time, I believe President Mahindra Rajapaksa has a bigger role to play in that, with his experience and with his knowledge. And he has gone through the mill for a very long time and he's been 53 years in parliament for this year. So I'm sure if there is election, when there is election, uh, President Mahindra Rajapaksa's uh, party and his policies will uh, definitely be the majority in the parliament. See, SLPCP is a, is a party with a vast network. I mean, uh, we are not a party that based in urban areas. Our voter base is more, more into the masses. So we, we don't see a bigger change or massive change in our voter base or massive shift from us, from SLPP to any other left, any, any other leftist parties or any other parties. Uh, but at the same time, I believe SLPP must restructure itself, especially when it comes to policy. Uh, the current government, with under President Vikram Singh, um, you know, as I said, they have managed to do a lot of things. But at the same time, we we see a lot of gaps as well. You know, especially the domestic economy or the manufacturing industry, and um, to get the economic activities going in the masses, uh, employment creation and job creation, and at the same time, uh, the approach towards SMEs and the investment culture that we have to look at and how we can address the youngsters, create them more entrepreneurs, get them, the, get them into the new generation trading 
uh, how we can get them into uh, the digital markets or digital currencies, you know, that kind of uh, sectors. So SLPP is working very closely with a lot of organizations now, uh, restructuring ourselves on policies as well and, uh, and working on a policy paper uh, for how, for, to see how we can bring Sri Lanka into a trillion dollar economy in the next 20 years. And I think SLPP, as a political party, we are very open-minded. And we have, we are, as I said, we are based in the masses of the country. So we believe um, restructuring ourselves on policy, uh, especially when it, how, how we can address the current issues and how we can be in par with the global trends. Uh, especially when we are anticipating a global recession as well, uh, which is very important for us as a political party and as a country to be vigilant and be ready to face it. So I think SLPP is getting um, act together now. Uh, and for next elections, we will, you will see a lot of young people coming and contesting from SLPP. Well, I mean, it was a tough time, obviously. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, we, we, we grew up in a very politic political background. And uh, we have gone through this. My house was bombed in Tangol when I was three years old, when my younger brother was just born. Uh, that was in 1989. Uh, and now my houses are burned again by the same political party. So I think my wife and my son, who is two years at that time, or one and a half years at that time, went through a bigger trauma than us, obviously. Uh, one of my, because the vehicle my son traveled was also attacked. And my wife is not from a political background. So she, she's coming from a middle class business background, entrepreneurial background. And same with my brothers and their families, and their wives as well. But, you know, as a family, we believe, uh, you know, we have done our best. We believe we have done, my father especially has done enough for the people. I mean, he has done a lot of development. When he took over the country, we were $17 billion economy. In 10 years' time, he got it up to $85 billion, and we, he ended a 30-year-old war. And by, by the time he hand over the country, uh, the economy was at 6.7% growth, unemployment was single digit, interest rates were single digit, entrepreneurs were booming, in the industries were, in construction industry was booming. So he has done his part, but you know, this is politics, you know, we have to be used to it. I mean, if you look at this, is not, he is not the first leader who has gone through this. If you look at even um, Anagarika Dharmapal, who was, who later went to India, you know, he, he had a similar feeling about uh, Sri Lanka at one point. So. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, we come from a political background. We, we, we are born to a political family. So we, we had to accept it. We had to get used to it. Uh, but end of the day, that is life. Uh, I thought that at one point. But I think uh, things are changing globally. Uh, we thought that we were trapped at one time between two countries, or we were stuck between two countries. But I think things are changing globally as well. So eventually, uh, I believe uh, it's all about trade. So China has been a very strong trade partner for Sri Lanka, and very strong infrastructure development partner for Sri Lanka during my father's tenure. But none of these countries have been doing politics in our country. Uh, the, Maybe certain political parties want individual countries to help them and be established in this country, but none of them, I'm sure none of them are interested in being in doing politics in our country. So I think dynamics are changing globally, and geopolitics is changing, trade is changing. So eventually, uh, you won't be able to ask that question from me in coming years.